As we saw in the last episode, in 1905, Einstein showed that Galileo's principle of relativity could be safely reconciled with Maxwell's equations of electrodynamics if we assume that the speed of light is constant to all frames of reference. His special theory of relativity showed that there was no mechanical or electrical measurement you could make that would allow you to determine your absolute velocity through space. Indeed, Einstein proved that the very concept of an absolute velocity, other than that of light, was meaningless. But his theory had one huge flaw. It assumed that all frames of references were inertial. That is, they moved at a fixed velocity. There was no acceleration. But in a universe filled with gravitational fields, no such frame of reference exists. The special theory of relativity is interesting, but it doesn't apply anywhere in this universe. This bothered Einstein a lot. But then later, in 1907, while still working at the patent office, he had what he later described was his happiest thought. Imagine Galileo's ship again. You're inside the cabin and you can't see out. You've got no way to measure the motion of that ship. You feel gravity. You can drop items and see that they're accelerated downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. But does that gravity actually exist? Or is the vessel within which you stand being accelerated upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared? This was Einstein's great insight. There is no experiment you can perform, no measurement you can make, that will tell you whether you're in a gravitational field or simply being accelerated in the opposite direction. The two situations are exactly equivalent. Indeed, Einstein called this the principle of equivalence. Now let's go back to the special theory for a moment. Einstein expressed the special theory of relativity as a set of coordinate transformations between two frames of reference that were in relative motion to each other. If you were in one frame of reference and you wanted to know what someone else in another frame of reference would measure, you would simply apply the transformations. And as we saw in the last episode, measurements of time and length do not agree between the two frames of reference. Measurements of time and length disagree. But what Einstein did is he mixed those two concepts. He came up with the concept of space-time. And he used space-time as the coordinate system for the two frames of reference. Because measurements in space-time do agree between the two frames of reference. In 1907, the problem that Einstein faced was whether his principle of equivalence, the more general form of relativity, could be expressed as a more general set of coordinate transformations. It took Einstein eight years, but by 1915 he had finally found the coordinate transformations that incorporated gravity and acceleration into relativity. But whereas the special theory cast those transformations upon a nice, flat, simple Euclidean coordinate system, the only way Einstein could make the general transformations work was to abandon Euclid altogether and assume that space-time was curved. The upshot of all this is that gravity is equivalent to a curvature in space-time. Mass warps space around it. Bodies that move through that warp space travel in curved trajectories, giving them the appearance of acceleration. Gravity is a curvature in space-time. Perhaps you think that curvature is subtle. It's not. See that curved path? That is the straightest line this object could follow in this part of space-time. That is the curvature of space-time in this vicinity. Turns out, around here, near the surface of the Earth, space-time is very curved. 
The more curved space-time is, the tighter the paths that objects will follow inside that space-time, and the slower time will flow for those objects as well. Is space-time really curved? All we can really say about that is that the predictions of general relativity have been verified over and over and over again. From the strange time dilation effects that occur deep in gravitational fields to the way that space-time gets dragged around rotating bodies and to the way light bends around massive objects. It all works, and to the best of our ability to measure it, it works exactly the way Einstein said it should. General relativity is one of the most reliable theories we have. But that leads us to a really nasty problem. We're not going to talk about that just now. We'll leave that for another time.